My name is Brianne Beebe and I've had some requests to share how I set up a Google Sheet so that it produces a self-checking activity. Now I keep it very simple. I do have a friend that creates templates for pixel art that are amazing. I'm going to link her TPT store down below so you can search through her templates if that's what you're interested in. Her templates are pre-formatted. She goes through all these directions to show you how to do the pixel art. It's really cool but I don't have the time to do that for every single activity. So if I'm doing something really short and simple, this is what I'm doing. So to start, I teach geometry, which means that I need to have images all the time and diagrams and whatnot. So the first step that I do, which you're not going to see here, is I sketch out the different problems that I want to have, and I decide how many problems I want, all that good stuff, and I make an answer key. So before I sit down to my computer, I know exactly what I'm doing to make the sheet and I have all the answers ready. So I have all my images here in PowerPoint and what I do is I make a table and that just allows me to use the snipping tool or the screenshot tool and get a consistent size on all of my images. So I just went to insert table. I decided what I wanted. I did a five by two table and then I just played with the sizes of the cells until I got what I wanted. And then, like I said, I used shift command five on my iMac and I took screenshots of all 10 of these questions. So then I'm ready to format my Google sheet. I'll go into the address bar or the URL and type out sheets.new and it will open up a brand new Google spreadsheet for me. I'll click here and title it right away. I'm doing finding sides for trig. And once you've named it, the file will come up and you can move it and put it directly in the folder that it belongs right away. So one thing that I do on all my sheets is I click up here in this corner and I change the font to happy monkey, which is just a very readable font for not just letters, but also numbers. All right, so my first cell, A1, I'm going to use it as a placeholder for directions. You could also include a title if you wanted to. I usually don't because it's already up here in the name of the file. And then I'm just thinking through how I want this to look. And this is where it'll be different for everyone. I'm doing 10 questions like I showed before in the PowerPoint. And actually, I want to format it the same way and have my problems going across. So I'll have five across and I'll have two rows of them. So I want my picture to show up here and underneath it, I want to have a spot where it's like X equals because they're solving for X. And then in the cell next to X equals, I want a question mark because that's where I want the answer to go. So in these cells up here, I want the picture to be there, but I need them to be combined first. So I go to format, merge cells. I will merge horizontally. And then I'm going to go up here to insert image and I want the image in the cell. So I'm going to open up my folder where I have the images and drag and drop it to upload. And so when it first appears, it's very, very teeny tiny. And then I'll just drag this until I get it to be a size that I want. And then I'm going to go ahead and repeat that process for the next few problems. So I'll do it one more time. Just so you can see, I highlight those two cells. I go to merge horizontally and it merges them together. And then I go to insert and then I go to image in cell. And then I drag it down and then we get the picture there. Underneath I'll type X equals and then next to that I'll put a question mark. So actually what I do is I put the question mark in there when students get this so that they know where to put their answers, but I'll, I started putting the answers in the cell automatically at the beginning and I'll show you why in a moment. So I'm only going to do the two just for the sake of time. You might want to highlight the cells and maybe change the alignment. Like I could have these centered. I could have them toward the middle of the cell. I like to take the X equals cells and have them be left aligned. And then I like to have the answer cells center aligned, but that's all your preference. It just depends on what you like. See, I also like to have the, I also like to have them in the middle. So I'll do that too, even though they're already there. Sometimes I like to make this row a little bit bigger and I can right click 
and go to resize row and then just change it to whatever number I want. And you can play with that. I could also go up to the columns and resize columns to change them as well. So I'm not going to go through and put in all of the questions because I don't have time. Um, what I like to do after I have my questions in though is highlight all the columns and delete them. And then I like to also do the same thing for the rows. So I highlight them all the way, they go all the way up to a thousand. So it just takes a minute. And then I right click and I can delete rows and it says four through 1000. So normally there would be more rows and more columns. And I always tell my students, if you wanna see this bigger, you could always zoom in because we all have different computer sizes and it might look a little small on their screens. So they have that option. So I'm just zooming it in just for the sake of being able to see what I'm doing here. And I will also take the cells for the directions and merge those and type in whatever the directions are there. Okay, so now for the fun part, the conditional formatting. So I click on one of the answer spaces, I go up to format and conditional formatting, and then we get this menu that pops up over to the right. So this right here is the cell that I'm working in. If I wanted the same thing to be applied to multiple cells, I could add them by clicking here on this grid and adding them. But this is the really cool part. So we go to format rules. It says format cells if, and you click and look at all of these options. So you do whatever is going to make sense for you. What I've been doing is going to text is exactly. At first I was doing text contains. So if you do text contains and the answer is 10, but a student types in something like negative 10 or how right now I have 10.3, it would be counted correct. So I like to go to text is exactly. And then right here it says value or formula. I'm going to type in that value, which is 10.3. And then you could change these different things of formatting. You can make it bold, italicized, underline. You could do the strike through. You could change the text color. I typically just change the background color or like the fill color. And then you click done and that's it. And the reason I like to put the answer in the box is so that I know right away that I did it right. When students see it, it has question marks so that the box is white, but when they put in the 10.3, it will change to green. So let's see that again. The conditional formatting menu is still right here. So I'm just going to click on add another rule, but if I got rid of it by accident, again, you go to format and then conditional formatting. So I'm going to click here. This is the cell I already have selected, so it's going to be applying to D3. You go to format cells if. You might want to consider some of these other ones. It really depends on what you're doing for your activity, but I'm going to text is exactly. My value for this one is 8.8. .8. And then you could change what color you want it to be. I just tend to go for a nice bright green. I'm going to click done. I could add in another rule. So some people like to have the cell change to red if they put something in that's wrong. So we would have text does not contain, and then I'd put in 8.8, .8, and then I would just change this to red and click done. And so if I put something else here, it's going to be red. So anything else I put in there is red, but once I put in 8.8, .8, it turns green again. So that is the gist of it. What we could also do after that is put protections on it so that students couldn't like take out the directions or let's say you would typed in a problem instead of having a picture here, if you had, you know, 2X plus seven equals 12 or something and you don't want students to change it, we're going to put protections on the cells. Let's put my picture back real quick. So we're going to go to data and we're going to go to protected sheets and ranges. There's a few different ways that we can do this, but probably the fastest, easiest way is if we go to sheet and this one's labeled sheet one. I also like to go down here and rename this to whatever it is that we're doing, but I'm going to leave it sheet one for right now. And so we're going to protect all of sheet one. And then I'm going to click here and say, accept certain cells. And I'm going to click in this grid and decide which cells I want to protect. 
So I want to protect B3 and D3 because those are the cells that I want students to be able to type in. Then I'm going to click OK, set permissions, and then you decide what you want to do here. Now, if you put restrict, you can edit this range and it's only you. Once you send this off to your students to work on and they get a copy of it, they become the people that can change it. So usually it's better to have show a warning when editing this range. Click done. And if you go up here to enter a description, you can change what it says. So you can put on something like do not touch, do not change, do not edit. Click done and you're all set. You can see down here there's a lock on the sheet so that you can't um, mess with it. And then I'm gonna put in the question marks. And again, this one turns red because we did it that way. The possibilities here are endless. So try what you can. If you have any questions, you can ask me. I'm by no means an expert. I'm just sharing what I found to be very quick and simple. But if you have questions, I will try to get you some answers. I know one question that I do get is, can students just look up the conditional formatting to figure out what the answers are? And the answer is, yeah, they probably can. But do they know how to do that? Do they even know what conditional formatting is? I think you're probably safe. I hope you and your students enjoy this. And as always, thanks for watching.